for more on this, uh, I'm joined by Patrick van der Forst, founder of ValueMyStuff.com and a former director of Sotheby's. Can you explain that gap between the, the, what they expected to get for it and that massive figure that was paid in the end? What, what prompted the frenzy? Uh, what prompted the frenzy is, that, a, first of all, the, the provenance of the piece, I think the very sort of decorative uh, aspect, and at the end of the day, an estimate is always sort of a guidance, but if two or three people are really very interested in the actual item, then the sky is the limit, and then the, the, the price can go up and achieve a result like we've seen yesterday. And is this sort of indicative of more sort of Chinese buy buying power in things like auctions, which they maybe weren't involved in so much before? Yes, I, absolutely. I think with sort of the advent of China and the Chinese tiger being in real sort of full swing uh, at the moment, the art market does follow suit, uh, does follow the economic market. And I think probably for the first time in 50, 60 years, there are some individuals now in China who really have that buying power and the buying capacity to, to, to buy at those levels. So whilst it's an, an amazing prize that we've seen being achieved yesterday, I think I don't think it's sort of a one-off and I think in the future probably very similar records will be will be achieved and set. And I think also people have been taken by the idea the, the story of it and these people who were searching through the house and they kind of stuck it on a bookcase while they were busy searching through the other stuff. So kind of the, the sensation that they actually might have knocked it off the bookcase. Uh, how, how unusual is it for people to find things that are so valuable in amongst you know the stuff that's in people's houses? Yes, it, it's actually surprisingly enough not that unusual. I think a lot of people have items at home that they've inherited from family members, from their parents, their grandparents, and they actually don't really know what they have in the house and how valuable uh, it is. So like on our, on our website, we, uh, we do come across that fairly regularly and we're valuing between two, three hundred items a day and I would say at least five or ten of those uh, items that get submitted, people get very pleasant surprises uh, with. Uh, so it's, it's not that unusual, I would say. Also, I suppose in this case, it was quite good for the local auctioneers, wasn't it? Because they, they weren't a sort of a massive company, were they? But uh, it's obviously been quite good news for them. No, ab absolutely. And I think it sort of adds to the, it, it adds to the whole story that it was found and sold at a, at a more sort of regional and, and, and local auctioneers. It, it definitely adds to the, to, to the charm and to the real find, because for the Chinese buyer who would have bought the item, uh, it would have definitely played a factor that he would uh, go on to bid so high, because it was an item that was fresh on the market, never seen before, it, it wouldn't have been seen by a dealer in the last sort of 40, 50 years, so that would have certainly added to the, to the pedigree of the piece and, and to the desirability. Okay, Patrick Van der Forst, very good to talk to you, thank you. Great, thank you very much.